We're Heather and Jeff. A couple of full-time adventurers living in a Bigfoot travel trailer. Welcome to our rolling home. Today we're at the Ericsson Aircraft Collection, and we thought it would be a good setting to film a rig tour. We've been waiting and waiting to film this because we thought, well, we'll just wait until we get the rig cleaned up good. And so two days ago, we got it cleaned up, and then it promptly rained, so we're not waiting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just time to get it done, I guess. Yeah, so it's gonna be a little bit dirty. You'll just have to forgive that. Um, it's a lot cleaner than it was two days ago, so yeah. that's a plus. It was clean for like, I don't know. 12 hours. <laughs> Probably not even 12 hours. And that was overnight, so. And then we had to drive in the rain as well. Anyway, we're just gonna kinda hit the highlight, show you a little bit around our rig. We're not gonna go into any great details on our modifications or anything we've made. That'll be separate videos later. So let's get started. We have a 2019 Bigfoot 25B25RQ. And the Bigfoot is the manufacturer. They're made in British Columbia and it's a 25 footer and it has a rear queen size bed. And we're pulling it with a 2012 Dodge Ram 3500 with the Cummins diesel. It's the same truck that we used to use uh, for our truck camper if you've seen some of our early videos. So let's go take a closer look around. So let's take a look up front. We use a 10,000 pound equalizer weight distributing hitch. We've got a Lippert Smart Jack here on the front of the trailer. Uh, the only really smart part about it is you can program for the hitch height, which is kind of nice. So when you unhook the trailer and you move the tongue back down, you could just hit, hit a couple of buttons and it'll come back up to its original position. Then we also have a set of rock tamers here that we've added to the hitch to help protect the trailer from rocks and dirt that's slung up by the back tires of the truck. This front nose area on the trailer houses the two 30 pound propane tanks. So it kind of keeps them out of the weather. For those of you that may be less familiar with travel trailers, let's take a quick look at what's down the driver's side of the trailer. This first compartment or area is the six gallon water heater. Got an outside shower here. City water hookup and fresh tank fill. A cable TV hookup. Uh, shore power connection, furnace, gas furnace, black tank flush, and then back here is a large storage compartment. This is a lighted compartment. Uh, we've got our cord adapters and everything stored on a shelf up top. And then there's another shelf up in this region for storing the electrical wires and some hose and, and various other things. And all of the plywood shelving you see was designed and, and put in by us. Then on the passenger side of the trailer, we've got another small outside storage compartment here and a connection here for the external solar panel that we have. We have a 100 watt external panel. And then also on the passenger side of the trailer is a full length awning. It's a manual awning. And we also have a couple of AC outlets. At the back end here, uh, we've got a wireless backup camera that we've added, a full size spare tire with matching aluminum wheel, a fat tube ladder for access to the roof, and an external hitch receiver here that we've added uh, for the times we wanna take the hitch out of the back of the truck and just stored on the back of the camper here while we're camping. Just ahead of the tires here on the driver's side of the trailer are the tank valves. So down here's the main drain port where you'd hook your waste hose or your stinky slinky up at a dump station. And uh, kind of going through the controls here, this is the freshwater drain. This is the gray tank drain. So gray water would be like your, your sink and your shower water. And then back here is the black tank release valve. 
and uh, that's your poop valve. So that dumps your, your, your black tank, which is your toilet. So each of these handles is what's called a blade valve, and they are inside of this fiberglass compartment. So they're fully sealed and in a heated area so that whenever the furnace is on, the inside of this compartment is being heated. Uh, therefore, uh, you don't have to worry about freezing in cold temperatures. And this little doodad here that was added by us is simply uh, to allow you to hook this tether to it when you remove the cap so it doesn't dangle and get in your way. So there are several advantages to owning a Bigfoot trailer that kind of different things that set it apart from most of the other trailers that you might see. Uh, a couple of things we just talked about were the uh, enclosed blade valves for the waste tanks, enclosed and heated. There's also a full fiberglass underbelly that it too is insulated and heated. So the entire out, outside of the camper is sealed up and uh, insulated and warmed whenever the furnace is running. It also has a tubular steel frame. In addition to that, it has a very heavy built axles under it. So it has 5,000 pound axles and 3,500 pound wheel ends and brakes. So a trailer this size typically only has 3,500 pound axles under it, which is more than enough to carry the weight of the trailer. But they used 5,000 pound axle tubes, which makes it very robust and keeps you from bending an axle. Another advantage is both axles have shock absorbers to help dampen the ride. In addition, uh, the factory sends each trailer out with Goodyear Endurance tires, which are a high quality tire. All the pivot points can be greased. The leaf springs have bronze inserted bushings in them, not the plastic stuff. All right, well, why don't you take them through the inside of the trailer? Okay. Welcome to our rolling home. Um, you'll notice as you look around that we have most of the comforts of home. We'll show you all of that in a little bit. For now, we'll start here. This is our dinette. This is where we eat. It's where we lounge. It's where we work. It's where we do pretty much everything other than sleep or cook. Like most RVs, this table will drop down um, and make a bed. So if we have a guest, they have a place to sleep. One more thing I will point out while we're up here is that um, the windows in the Bigfoot all the way around are double pane insulated glass and they have a mirrored tent on the outside so they reflect the heat away from the camper. But man, that mirrored tent makes them terrible to clean. They streak up so bad. You may have also noticed our organizer that we have here on the table. That has been a game changer. We added that right before this trip. And it's been really nice to have a place to go with things like napkins and pens and remotes and all that good stuff. Underneath the table, we have a cart that we bought off of Amazon with our printer on it. Um, we kind of figured we'd probably need a printer at some point along this on this trip, and it has come in handy several times because um, we are living in this right now. So that's been nice. And then back here, you'll see that Jeff has mounted um, a security camera. Just gives us a little peace of mind when we have to leave, especially if we're in an area we're not real sure about. We don't stay in sketchy areas, but you know, sometimes you park at a grocery store parking lot or something and you'd like to be able to keep an eye on things so that's been really handy. We did ask Bigfoot to make a few changes up in this area. Um, we upgraded to their faux leather fabric um, but even usually when you upgrade to the faux leather there's a fabric panel in the back of the seat. The patterns are a little bit I don't know they're a little busy for us we just didn't care for it so we went on and um, asked them to do the faux leather there and then they also use the the pattern fabric in the balances and so we asked them to switch that up also we think it turned out really nice one thing we really liked particularly about this floor plan was this extended call it a couch over on this side um, it gives you a little bit more seating it's really nice for lounging in the evenings and it's also great if you have people over company that kind of thing just inside the door here are the panels that like this turns on the inverter this shows our battery levels this turns on the water heater to electric or propane this is the water pump switch and then this is our water guesstimator it is terribly inaccurate you just kind of have to guess this does nothing it's for a generator we don't have We have this thermometer here. It's mounted and there's a probe that goes down into um, the area where our tanks are located. So we can kind of keep an eye on the tank temperatures 
and if we need to bump the furnace up like if it gets below freezing we can bump the furnace up just to keep it warm enough down there not to freeze anything we also put in this 24 inch smart tv that um, was cheap and it shows <laughs> let's move on to the kitchen now you can see right here is our refrigerator it is a 12 volt um, compressor refrigerator from Novacool. One thing that makes this great is that it has um, two compressors, one for the fridge and one for the freezer, and that makes it run a little bit more efficiently so that they can run independently of each other. I also really like how the fridge is at the top and the freezer is at the bottom. It makes it so much more ergonomic because I mean, let's face it, you're getting in the fridge a whole lot more than you're getting in the freezer. So I really like that. A couple things that we've added in this area up here is a thermometer. It's a digital thermometer. We have uh, one sensor in the fridge and one in the freezer so we can monitor those temps. And then um, we also switched over to a digital thermostat for our furnace, which works really well. And we found this nifty little simple human trash can that, that fit perfectly. Over here we have a nice microwave that's mounted on top of the stove. We have a range hood that vents to the outside. Um, great three burner stove and an okay size oven. It's not huge, but it works. And then lots of drawer space. These are actually big, deep drawers that are really nice. And then three drawers here, some cabinet space down here, and then a bunch of space up here also. Here we have our sink, our kitchen sink. It's round. I'm on the fence about the round sink. It, it's kind of awkward sometimes, but it works. Um, we have an Acuva that we added. It's a water filtration system that uses a UV light to filter out the bacteria. Um, and then Jeff had one of his friends at work um, design this soap holder for us so that we can leave our soap out. We don't have to pick it up every time we go somewhere. And um, it's really convenient. Next up's the bathroom. It is tiny. There's not room for both me and Jeff in there. So he's just gonna show you in there, but you'll see it's got the basics. It's got a sink, it's got some storage space, it has a toilet, and it has a shower. That's all we needed. Right across from the bathroom is our wardrobe. It's just some hanging storage up here. And then we each have two drawers down below. And then the cabinet down at the very bottom is where Jeff keeps his shoes. And in the back of the trailer back here is the bedroom. You can see we have um, just a RV queen size bed, which means it's a little bit shorter, but it's the same width as a queen. For us short people, it's perfectly fine. Um, other than that, we haven't really made a whole lot of modifications back here. It's just kind of how it came. The only thing would be maybe these balances that don't have the fabric in them kind of like this, the same as in the front. We did add um, a dehumidifier over here. We found this on Amazon, I believe. Um, we can pretty much only run it when we're hooked up to shore power, but it does make a huge difference um, as far as the amount of condensation that we get when we do run it. And other than that, clearly it's laundry day. We have an overflowing laundry hamper. Some of you might be wondering how we power the camper, and that's his area, so I'm gonna let him talk about that. So our Bigfoot is powered by four 100 amp hour lithium batteries made by Battleboard. Uh, we really love them. They've been a, a great addition to the trailer. Uh, they're mounted under one of the dinette seats. And then we also have a 3000 watt uh, inverter by GoPower, and it powers all of our AC appliances. Uh, the batteries are recharged by our 400 watts of solar panels on the roof of the trailer. We also have an additional 100 watt panel that we set outside sometimes when we're parked in the shade, but we can set the panel in the sun that way. We can also charge it from the alternator um, on the truck when we're driving. And then of course we can power from shore power also. The electrical system, I will say, has worked flawlessly. It's been great. And that's what's allowed us to have that DC refrigerator. Thanks for watching our tour. We hope you enjoyed seeing our home away from home. Yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below.